Hello everyone, Basic Ollie here, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another GT Sport video. So for today's video then, I'm actually learning how to use my new load cell pedals. As you can see, by the qualifying time and my SR rating, it's not been going too well. So I'm going to try and explain to you exactly what load cell pedals are and how they really can affect you in this game. Now, with Gran Turismo Sport, it's a little bit different to other games because it's ABS. So as you can see... This middle pedal here, this is my new load cell pedal. As you can see, you really have to put a large amount of pressure on it to make sure that it really puts 100% pressure into the brakes and, you know, you get as much performance from the brakes as you can. However, with Gran Turismo Sport, with the ABS settings, to be quick, you need them on default or weak. And load cells don't really work that way. Um, they more work on the pressure that you give it and you can feel when the ABS is not there and it kind of locks up. But on Gran Turismo Sport, that thing is just completely obliterated because it's not there. There is no such thing as a lock-up on this game. You literally just you just press you can press square and it just does the braking perfectly for you every time. So I've got these low tail pedals. Now they are a massive improvement. Don't get me wrong. The feel is really good and it's really cool. But on games like Gran Turismo Sport with the ABS, kind of hit and miss, and it takes a while to get used to it. So I'm really just yeah, I'm just getting used to it really. And we're going to jump into this race here. Uh, as we are a few corners underway, actually straight away, as we, this German goes wide here, uh, Ackerman 4711, as we go side by side for this left hander. Um, I was really cautious about doing that move actually, because again, just not used to my load cells yet at all. And when I've been speaking to my, um, I've been speaking to you guys, um, who have got them, uh, you've always said it normally takes about a week or two, and you've got to wear, you've got to watch out for socks as well, because you do tear through a lot of socks. Now that does sound strange, but you put so much pressure between your foot and the material, it's ridiculous. You can see here though, if you go into this corner, I've highlighted it here, this is how I go wide. This is a prime example of what the difference is between the load cell pedals, okay? Because I went to that corner and I was slowing down enough, but I'm so used to having just normal pedals that I just kind of let go. But I couldn't quite do that. I just put some guy absolutely smashed himself into the wall back there. But uh, yeah, you can't quite do that uh, with these pedals. So you need to you need to keep that constant pressure. Uh, unlike normal pedals, you can literally just put it down, let it go. Uh, I've just I kind of half you know put it down and then slowly let off. And it seems that's not the way to do it. You need to just all the pressure that you can and then let go. And all the pressure on the load cell is quite a lot. I think I've got it on the funny enough as well. I think there's three settings, so you get three different types. Um, there's like these plastic, not plastic rings, I'd say, but you can attach them to the brake pedal themselves, and they adjust um, to how much they can take. So I think the default ones, which I've got, I think it's 30 kilos of pressure. The second one is 65 kilos, and then the third set, I think, is 90 kilos. Now, if you use 90 kilos as brake pressure, you are a monster. I don't know how you do it, but there's just no way in hell. I just don't think you could enjoy it with that much. Um, having to put that much pressure into a pedal um, absolutely ridiculous but uh, yeah funny story about load cells I've had them for a while Fanatec sent, them, sent me them um, back in November uh, but my old rig couldn't take it so now I've got this um, next level GT track absolute monster uh, it takes it pretty well so uh, yeah no flexing it seems to be pretty cool um, but yeah it's just, it's just getting used to them so this first race here again I'm just one thing I have noticed by the way which is really stupid of me I do apologise is I keep over revving the Supra. Uh, you need to make sure that you shift about 70%, something like that. Uh, and I am just not doing that at all through the first race here. Uh, completely and utterly messed that up. A few guys um, from my Discord, though, did tell me it needs to be about 60 or 70%. I don't ever remember the Supra being like that. Let me know in the comments if that's changed recently. But I always thought the Supra was um, a car where you fully rev it. I didn't think it was like a Corvette or a McLaren or whatnot. I thought, you know, you just give it the full beans and then change when it's like 100% uh, through the rev range. I didn't think it was like... 60 or 70 percent but uh yeah anyways going for this first corner this tight left hander uh it's an awesome corner it really really is but um it's all about getting that racing line correct because if you go wide it's a real pain in the ass to get it back you you'll have a nice exit up the hill when you'll you'll gain speed but going wide there does cost quite a bit of time and another left hander here absolutely awesome this track is so fast and flowing it'd be absolutely awesome if it's a track in real life i'm afraid it is not it is a made up track that Gran Turismo made not quite sure when it first appeared I think it might be this game I don't think it appeared for any other Gran Turismo again 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 let me know in the comments uh, what you feel this uh, middle sector here as well this set of corners I really don't like it and I'll tell you why it's because you have to you literally have to cut the corner to be quick so you've 
when I watch, we'll go through qualifying in a bit because I go through qualifying again to improve, and I'll um, I'll show you exactly what I did to to improve my time. But yeah, as you go through there, you gotta have like one wheel left on the curb or the tarmac, and the rest are on the grass, and it just doesn't fit quite right with me. I'm not sure I quite like that. I don't think it should. I don't think it should stand. I'm feeling like if you if you've got that, you know, such a large amount of car off the track, then maybe um, it shouldn't sit, and your qualifying time shouldn't stand. You know. Um, but again, something you guys can let me know in the comments. All open for discussion, obviously, but these are just um, my thoughts and opinion. But already, uh, we're on the last lap here. We set a 32 se um, seven, 32 four, sorry. Not the fastest lap in the world. We're going to set the world alight, but certainly an improvement. You see, I go wide here, but thankfully not too wide, and we can get a nice, fast, flowing exit up the hill. Uh, awesome. Again, this track, I have to say, there's some really, really awesome tr um, corners. Uh, on this track. This track doesn't appear enough in day races, I don't think. It's absolutely awesome. And this is the shortened version as well, isn't it? There's a longer version. Uh, as we go through the first sector, a tenth and a half up, nailing the breaking point there for once, which is really good to see. Getting into fifth gear just on the exit of the corner. Maybe you should be going a little bit wider, going on the kerbs, um, if you really nail it. But unfortunately, couldn't quite do that. Getting a slip from you can see here, uh, three temps up through the middle sector. This is what I mean, you can see. I you see that as I went over the kerb, only one wheel was still on that kerb, um, but it didn't count as me going off. Normally, any other track, it does. I'm not quite so, not quite sure why it's different here, um, but it certainly, certainly is. But so uh, yeah, right behind this guy, the Portuguese guy, LPS one or LPS I underscore Acebe. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, nearly half a second up there through the um, middle sector. There, it just goes to show you, just need a little bit of practice with these pedals to get up to get up to speed and I've just about done that there I think uh, but yeah he just goes a little bit wide the guy from Portugal there and I'm gonna get the slipstream here and I just lose the rear end ever so slightly and it's just not quite enough and again you can see I'm fully revving the engine it's not what you should be doing uh, that was a yeah it was just it was an okay race 32-2 uh, to to end it a bit as well but I do apologize my pace is not there at the moment it's something I will work on absolutely but it's not something I'm uh, so that's something I'm up to pace with. So let's go through qualifying and let's see what we can do. So the first corner here, I noticed, just breaking on that white mark or just afterwards, um, as you break hard, stick into that left-hand side. If you go outside the blue stuff, you've gone too wide and the lap's kind of done already. It's, it's a strange one, to be honest with you. Uh, and then following this guy up the hills is PR1 Fire, the guy uh, in front of me. I just wanted to use him as a ghost to see, you know, just to make sure I was getting my breaking points correctly. Maybe not the brake pressure, but the breaking points were at the, you know, I was, I was breaking at the right time. Anyways, now we're going, we've gone past up the hill. That, another breaking point here. It's not quite the 50 meter board. It's between the 50 meter board and the Marshall post over there. Breaking really hard. Again, two wheels on the left hand side. You can see um, I haven't got all the wheels in the blue stuff and that does cost me time. Okay, so there's, again, a, a note if you are doing a qualifying round here, try and keep those wheels within the blue lines. Now slow it down here, you have to brake really hard, two wheels on the kerb, but as you go through this section here, you keep it in fourth gear, again look at that, three wheels basically on the grass, same thing here, one on the kerb, three on the grass, and then two on the kerb here, uh, it's just, oh, it's, you've got to keep the car as straight as you possibly can, if you put it in third gear I think it's way too unstable, and it's not going to do you any favours. Uh, break a point here is just at the end of the letter R, or just slightly beforehand, depending on how brave you are or how brave you want to be on the brakes. I really had to slam it there uh, and then let go of the brakes nice and tight. Again, blue stuff on the, on the outside of the circuit. Uh, it's a massive part. Um, it really gives you a good indication of what your racing line should be. And then slowing it down through here, brake it at the end of the kerb, and get that car over to the left-hand side as soon as you can. Um, almost three, four wheels as you fly over the kerb. Um, it's a much better racing line to go for. And then here again, break at that 50 meter board where that guy's taking a photo of someone in front of me who can actually drive rather quickly. And yeah, through here, nice and tight. Just work on that nice smooth exit and make sure you get two wheels on the curb on the outside again, blue stuff on the outside of the track. And that should be enough to set us a 131.444, I believe. There you go, get in there, Lewis. Um, but yeah, that should be plenty faster, I like to think to start on pole in the kind of lobbies I'm in at the moment because we do have that SR drop which means we are not quite uh, the top with the top boys right now um, but we'll work on it we'll work on it I had a bit of a nightmare on Monday's stream which I'm sure many of you witnessed unfortunately but there we go anyways race two of this video then I'm gonna keep an eye I'm gonna keep this so the Spaniard behind me right I'm gonna keep an eye on him I'm gonna leave his race in the top right hand corner 
okay? Because this was a really, really good race, I thought, with this Spaniard. It was absolutely quality. So I'm going to leave his on board in the top right-hand corner. We're going to try something. Just let me know what you think of having his on board in the, in the top right-hand corner. It's just it's interesting to see a different, um, from, you know, seeing someone's perspective, you know, seeing their point of view when they're racing against me. So you guys can see um, how I'm getting on and you can see the weaknesses um, compared to myself and this guy. Um, behind me, so we go up the hill. You can see him seven temps up. So I've, I've made a really good start, um, but I think as we go through this corner here, um, I'm just breaking a little bit too late. I'm breaking on the Marshall post rather than between the Marshall post and the I think it's 150 or 100 meter board there, and that does cost me um, a tenth or so. But again, nice exit in the end, and I am I am actually at the slip tree. But as you can watch myself through here, break way too late. Don't put enough pressure on. I stick in fourth gear. The racing line is just nowhere near good enough, and the Spaniard behind me gave about three tenths on me there, so that's quite a big, you know, I have the gap as well at the slipstream, and, you know, just that one corner, or set of corners, I should say, completely and utterly ruined my race there. Nice and tight through the left-hander here, though, which is good to see. Um, it's just on the back of me there, actually, it's about two, three tenths now, isn't it? So, yeah, it's just, just under three tenths. Uh, I've got to be careful of Tom uh, Pommel as well, the guy from... Um, uh, the Dutch, the Dutchman, I should say. Um, now, I think the Spaniard is going to go for a nice move up the inside here. I do see it early, so I make sure I go wide. Now, I do try and retaliate on the outside, but he swipes across there. So, good thing we managed to avoid that. Uh, whether he did that, but I think it was just it was really eager on the throttle. And anyway, to be fair play, he got the move done. And I just see the opportunity here. Just doesn't quite cover the move off. And we get a lovely move down the inside. He tried his best to defend it. But there was just, just a car's width there. And I took the opportunity with both hands. And we just managed to get ourselves back into P1. But that was a nice little move. He made a nice move through the last right-hander. And then just on the straight, I managed to get my car through that little gap. And we go back up to P1. But the pressure's on here. And we go purple in the first sector. To be expected now. I'm going to go wide here. But I can just see him there. And I just outbreak myself again. Uh, stupidly and annoyingly. Again, it's just having those load tail pedals. Got to get used to them. Breaking points are obviously a major thing in any racing game, and I'm still not quite there, but the more I practice with them, the faster I get, I'm sure I will. Going through this middle sector once more, or this set of corners, I should say, uh, a little bit smoother this time, much faster. Uh, I followed the Spaniard in front of me. I should know the racing line by now, um, but again, I think it's all down to the, the breaking points and just getting the car slow, slowed down, as I do here, actually, um, quite well. But yeah, it's a completely different experience. Um, using those low tail pedals. I haven't tried them on a game like ACC or iRacing. I've been informed that it's a lot better suited for those kind of games. It's not really sort, you know, it's not really suited for a game where if you just press square, you know, <laughs> it's as good as having a, a set of pedals and such. But we shall see. Anyways, uh, I'm on the inside of this corner here. Now he does turn into me. Now I, thankfully, nothing really happened there. Um, but again, do let me know in the comments if you think that was my fault there. I think he just, um, I don't think he just quite saw me or maybe thought there was just enough of a gap. Now, I'll keep him to the inside as much as I can because I wanted to swing around the outside because I thought if you take a really tight line, I may be able to move around the outside, but couldn't quite put the move off or, or you know, pull the move off, unfortunately, but it doesn't really matter too much because we're still right behind this guy, and this has been a really, really good race so far. Uh, I love good, clean, hard race like this, which is exactly what we've got, uh, and we're going to go up the hill once more. Are we going to go purple through this sector here? No, we're actually six temps down again we went wide uh, through that first corner. I managed to hit the breaking point here, but I couldn't quite um, get the racing line I wanted uh, as we've got the Spaniard in front of us. And I just, I go a little bit too early on the inside, the apex there, and I went a little bit too wide on the exit as well, and that's cost me time. Breaking earlier than expected. Uh, again, I'm just following this guy. I just want to nail those middle corners. There's such a pain uh, in the arse to get correct. It's absolutely ridiculous. But this guy's going to go defensive or wide, I should say, here. And I try and uh, break. And then you have to break a little bit earlier here. And that's exactly what I've done because I'm on the inside line. And that's a nice switch back there. It's a nice little move. Uh, he tries to defend it, outbreaks himself. He goes a little bit wide. And again, I take that opportunity and I manage to move up the inside, get the move done. And that puts us back up to P1 with just a lap and a bit to go. But this guy is looking very, very racy. So again, just going to try and make my car as wide as I possibly can. Just try and make it difficult for him to get the move done, but I, look at this, I got a massive amount of oversteer there, uh, and the rear end just, yeah, just completely gave up on me, and unfortunately, Tom Powell has now come back and got that position, so we've swapped positions two or three times already, and now we've dropped down to P3 now, so we started this race on pole, and now we're down to P3, and that's no good, that's no good, you can be as fast as you want in quality, but 
it's all about the race at the end of the day, isn't it? You know, you don't get points for qualifying. Uh, you only get um, DR and SR for the race, I, I suppose, on this game. So uh, that's something you have to work on. Well, I will certainly have to work on this week as I'll probably do this race a few more times. We go up the hill, three temps up in the first sector, looking good, looking tasty. Again, just about keeping two wheels uh, on the blue stuff on the left-hand side there. Awesome corner, uh, that sweeping left hand. A little bit of contact with Tom there, but I don't think it was too malicious. I think we got the move done uh, nice and safely there. Again, through here, breaking as late as I possibly can, just applying that brake wrench as much as I could. You could see from the video um, I put at the start here just how much you really have to force the pedal down uh, if you want to get anything out of it. I'm sure... Uh, I'm sure I'll get used to it, but yeah, once more. Uh, little things like that, they're going to take me a little bit of time. Anyway, so absolutely nailed that left-hander there. That was absolutely awesome. And as we go through here, we're nearly half a second up here. So as soon as we've got a bit of clean air, um, we're, we're managing to do something here, which is uh, pretty awesome. We've got the slipstream, um, and we go through those set of corners there. Absolutely awesome. Breaking just before the 50-meter board. Now, I was looking to go up the inside here, but unfortunately, uh, he's defended that pretty well. Took the racing line that he needed to. And unfortunately, we're going to cross the line, and we're going to cross the line of P2 here. So no victory today uh, in this video, but that's absolutely fine. Um, we're just getting used to the pedals. I'm sure we will. We cross the line with a 131.7. Pretty tasty time in the end, but as the week goes on, I'm sure I'll improve. And fingers crossed, um, we'll get used to those low tail pedals. I've actually ordered myself some boots, <laughs> some carting boots, to make sure I don't tear through my socks to go with the pedals. So you know you've always made it when you have to wear carting boots and gloves to use the setup you use, so yeah, pretty damn awesome, but uh, yeah, second place best we've got today, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, sorry we're not up to pace, we'll get there eventually, but yeah, I just wanted to show you um, what using the low tails, like first experiences, uh, and fingers crossed we'll, we'll get there in the end, but uh, yeah, please do tell me if you did enjoy the video, uh, leave a like if you did, subscribe if you are new around here, and I'll catch you for the next one, take care, ta-da.